so today we are going to talk about restful design standards or principles rest is representational state transfer has been predominant alone for the web services designs as many of us are already using web services or web apis in our applications whether it's a web or mobile most of us following rest principles so i'm going to talk in context of app development today so apps need them and they should be efficient enough so uh, usually what we do is uh, we use apis to fetch data from third party or any database and we pass them accordingly to our business logic inside our app so from scratch we are using web services api for mainly on crud generations but lately with further advancement in web technologies it has become much more efficient and it can do more than only crud as we all know our palm devices whether it's ipad or iphone or android device or any phone applications have some limitations on hardware part so what we can do is we can do majority of work in apis in server side just to save enough time on processing as well as increase user response time of course they require versioning and additional metadata inside them thus it becomes easy to fine tune or debug any problem scenario within the app they also need documentation thus to reduce the time required for explanation among team whether it's a web team or mobile team for explaining web services their parameters their calls and the information flow between both teams so what is a common design normally we have a json i am considering here a json for example whether in general practice we put a status as one or zero depending our scenarios one means everything is well okay and then inside data or inside any specific key pair we return the response with the details for example we are here calling get a specific user dot php and i am passing id equal to 3 as a get param get call and i am getting in response id 3 name let's nurture and employee id 12345 now think what if there is a search for non existent id for example if what happens if i search 9245 as user id which is not in our database usually what we do is in controller we put status we fetch that record and when it we get result set as null we prepare same json as before with the status 0 and inside data we send message or out of data we put a message key and in the value will be our own value whatever we want to display like no record found or no user found now in this scenario we are still going inside controller and we are fetching the data and we are passing that in the response consider another scenario what will happen if db connection is lost when you call the api this usually doesn't happen often but this is a scenario which can happen so in that case what we do is uh, we wait for response time and after some time either we get response re- request time out or we get json improper in terms of scalability what if more than 10000 users are fetching same record so what we do is every call is having being called on the server for same thing instead of using as rest apis caching mechanism now we'll start with some best practices 
for rest in this session so usually instead of putting verbs like get all cars we should use entities like cars here i am using cars because it's better to use plural instead of singular name that helps a lot to understand properly also before going into rest development we should properly understand the difference and use case scenarios for get post put patch delete whatsoever for example get means you need to fetch entity or some resource based on your input parameters or maybe without input so you are getting everything you are listing everything post means you are fetching a resource or uri or an entity based on some actions like creation or updation or anything else but for updates and we have put we should use put instead of post which usually we see as a general practice using put post for updation also so precisely we should understand the differences between get post put patch delete all these which can help a lot also there is a new term hypertext as the engine of application state so we should always include the links for which we are working on as a resource uri for example in this example case i have appended links rel which is for self and the references which can be used within your application as per your business logic so what it hit os says it says that hypertext should be used to find way through api what about filters paginations and caching here i am using get parameter get api calls so for example uh, whenever we need to use filters or paginations we should make them part of api itself so here i am calling slash users department equal to web which will return me list of users from web department similarly i can include some conditions like users experience less than equal to 2 so this will return me the list of users having experience less than equal to 2 and what uh, will happen in some cases when we have very uh, very much high traffic application where we need to fetch a lot of records there are multiple concurrent calls going on then we should think about uh, reducing the bandwidth in that case we can specify some fields based on which we will be filtering the data instead of fetching all the data and filtering inside our code and then manipulating that data and parsing that response into via json we should also think about uh, optimizing our code using fields so here in this example we are fetching uh, users from web department based on experience and join here or you can say i am fetching users having web having experience and join here so i am listing only these three details instead of everything else also paginations can be part of the same api including uh, offset from for the start point and limit up to what record we want to fetch there is uh, one header in http x total count which can do a trick for us for limiting the uh, record count for the response it is very useful in multiple cases it it can affect a lot the response time for the end user so uh, what about caching can we can rest help us anyway in caching yes http has built in caching mechanism you can set headers and you are done so there are some status codes based on which you will be getting same data faster for example there is e tag versus lost modified so these are 
a part of http protocol which you should look into what about http status codes as i mentioned previously we have get put post patch delete uh, types so they are related with http status codes http status code basically specifies in the header what response body contains and any api should follow that principle so if i am returning 200 means my uh, api call went very well and i'll have some data in my response body if i am creating any resource then my http status code will be 201 so record is created and inside data we must have the created record as, as in response body 304 is last modified so it can help us in caching there are some scenarios when error codes happen so like 404 500 or 401 then in that case we can map payloads as per our need so in that for example in json we can put status it status code as 404 401 403 based on our uh, business logic or application logic and then inside error in the response body we can put error and you can specify user message which can be used by application or, or app so here I'm putting say uh, server is nasty and internal message for debugging or for more input on why this is happening so that can be verified by development team and application specific error code can be specified here i am putting code application number 23 and then i can also put as per head os i can put a link where you can see much more in depth detail about that error and the reason why that is happening a very good resource is twitter where we can see uh, api response codes and they have uh, mapped it very well the status codes as well as their application code logic. Thank you for listening.